Okay, winner's here. Time to get those tools out. Whether you bought new tools this year and have new picks on them that you've just dinged up, or you pulled the tools out of the shed from last spring and you want to give them a little touch up, we're going to cover a few different tips today on how to uh, sharpen our picks properly, but not over sharpen them so they wear out too quickly. So the key um, is to have some good tools. First, wear some leather gloves to protect your hands. And have a few files would be nice. A 10 inch file is good with a handle. And then an eight inch file are good to have in your shop or in your car. And then a smaller file, like a six inch file or even a five inch file here, might be nice ones to have in your backpack uh, for kind of like midday touch-ups along the way. Um, there's basically two usages of picks we're gonna go over. One is like just kind of being roughed up and in generally pretty good shape, but pretty dull. So the overall shape of the pick is still pretty accurate for mixed climbing, rubbing on rock. And then the other is really being bashed on rock. Um, and so you've got usually some kind of little bird beak bent over. You can see this pick has already started to, to flatten out a little bit uh, with the angle. So it's all about this first tooth. As soon as this first tooth is gone from the pick, you've lost all benefit from that pick and it's basically worthless. So it's time to get a new pick. You can see um, this pick right here is pretty much at this point worthless. That first tooth is pretty much gone. Um, time to throw that one away. So one thing that will help you is if you can have a few picks, a variety of picks, um, to use either on pure ice one day with a really thin new pick. Uh, or have a more durable pick or a half-used pick uh, when you're going mixed climbing or maybe going to punch through some ice you think may have rock behind it. Um, just nice to have some options about which pick you use different days. So that can save you some, some money and picks in the long term. You can swap those out a little bit. Uh, so we're just trying to recreate, really, this factory angle. And the most important angle when sharpening is to regain this nose angle right here. Um, you can see this one, that nose angle is still pretty good. It's a little rounded over and dull, but this nose angle has been sharpened so that the tip, as it disappeared, basically got sharpened more and more, but not the top. So it's more of a abrupt angle and flatter versus more aggressive. If we make it too aggressive, that nose angle, we tend to over sharpen the pick and can really wear it out quickly if it touches rock again. So let's take this pick that's in pretty good shape, but make it a little bit more steep of an angle on the nose. Um, we have a vise at home that can be helpful, but a lot of times we don't. We're just trying to get really stable and brace the tool somehow, either on a workbench or your legs. And we're gonna work on this nose angle. It's already quite sharp. If it were really dull, we might actually shave down this nose angle a little bit here. Um, since it's already pretty sharp, we're not gonna remove that much metal. I'm gonna pressure this point right here on the top and leave the bottom alone, and just do several strokes on each side. The angle that I'm pushing at this way matters as well. I don't wanna to go too much. I'm gonna turn it around. And now I'm going to try to hit just that nose, the top of the nose angle again here. Nice, long, even strokes. Trying to maintain the angle that's already there. You can see if I'm too flat this way, it gets very, very thin at the tip. So I'm trying to have it be a nice, even bevel on the top. Uh, from each side, again, a little bit at a time from each side. This will leave shavings underneath you, so either do it in the garage or get something to clean up if you're worried about it. And you can you can look at it this way too. If you picture this wood bench, the workbench here being the ice, when you're pinky rotates on the ice, you want to look at the angle that the, the point strikes the ice. If it were too flat, it would hit the top of the head, and that's not good, right? That's why we flick our pinky at the very end and get that pick to hit really well against the ice. Um, in this case, this pick is in pretty good shape. You can see the angle is, is pretty good, but it's been really dulled up by mix climbing on it. So we're going to do that one again as well. So 
with this pick, it's got a lot of the first tooth left, um, but the bottom of that first tooth is quite rounded. So I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit just to make these edges in the bottom sharper. Maintaining even pressure up into that first tooth with a little bit of pressure back as well, going into the second tooth, just to make really sharp 90 degree angles there. That's a lot better. Now this nose angle we said is pretty good. So we're gonna take a little bit off each side across the whole front of the pick. And just a little bit on each side, trying to balance out that angle. Keep checking it, make sure the angle is good and consistent. It does take some practice. You'll probably make some mistakes. Don't worry about that too much. And then the last little bit we'll do is hit the top of the nose right here, this top angle. A little bit right there. You can do it on the other pick as well. And that really helps. You can see it right now, this factory quite sharp angle right here. That abrupt angle makes it really hard to clean the pick out of the ice. By just taking a little bit off that corner, makes the cleaning much, much easier. And then we can also clean up the whole thing by doing the top edge here. Make that really sharp. That'll help in the cleaning process. And then also the teeth as well, the secondary teeth and so on. We can do first all the, the big kind of bevel angle. And then in between the teeth too. a lot better.